Hi, Robert from Clearview Property Inspections. Today, we're gonna to do a video on how to do your own building and timber pest report to use the roof cavity. Um, so you can use this knowledge if you're an existing homeowner um, and you wanna inspect your own um, home or what I'm gonna teach you today is how to inspect the roof for you. Um, obviously, it's not as good as uh, getting a professional, um, but um, for the DIYs, uh, this is a bit of info that can help. Uh, and for other inspectors that uh, want to learn from how we do it, um, by all means, watch the video. Um, so I'm going to start with uh, some of the tools that you're going to need to do a, a roof void inspection um, for the building and the timber pest. So let's have a look at what we got. Alright, so basic, we need a ladder. Without a ladder, you're not going to get into the roof void. So that's the basics right there. So for the roof voids, I just like to use just a standard P2 mask, um, nothing too serious. Um, that's all, all I use. Of course, you can use something more substantial, um, which we do use uh, when we go into the subfloors um, for certain reasons. But for the roof voids, um, I don't mind using something like this. Um, you're going to need a torch. Uh, so I like to use two. I like to use one for uh, like a head torch. Basically that frees my hands to uh, hold myself um, in certain difficult positions when I have to get into tight spots in the roof cavity. So I do use that. Um, but then I also like to use a, a powerful uh, LED torch uh, to shine the light in specific locations. So I generally use two. Um, this is the LED lenser, um, very good. Lifetime warranty, they're great. Um, the other thing, um, basic, but it's, you're going to need it, just a screwdriver like this, flathead, um, and I'll show you how we use that. Um, the other thing we use, I like to use latex gloves. Um, basically, I like to keep things, things clean. Um, a pet hate of mine is leaving fingerprints on the manhole or anywhere like that. So, I always wear gloves. Of course, uh, you guys can do what you want, um, but that's what I like to use. And I sometimes wear a hat just so I don't get, um, obviously, insulation as all these particles in the roof void. So I wear a hat. Um, so these are the basic things that we're going to need to do our roof void inspection. So come with me and I will show you how I do my roof void inspection. Thank you. Hi, everyone. Um, back to the... DIY is uh, roof inspection. I'm um, going to give you a bit of an example of what we do in our pre purchased uh, building in timber pest inspections. Um, so I'll give you a bit of a rundown. I'll try and film as best as I can. Obviously, I'm crawling around. Um, but uh, yeah, enjoy and see how we go. Okay, so we're in the roof void now. I'm just going to Crawl in. Um, just want to show you guys. Um, so part of the building um, inspection is we want to check the roof members, um, make sure that they're um, all solid and um, fixed well, I guess. Good structure. Um, so I'll give you a rundown on what things are called. Um, so this one right here, that's a rafter um, in the middle up there these are uh, let's see if i can get a better view i'll just move sorry guys uh, uh, i think it's a little bit better here um so that's the ridge board right here rafters um the timber that goes between both uh the rafters over there and there this is called a collar tie um the collar tie helps with um, separating forces and that keeps the rafters together there's another one there yep um, and that stops separation from the rafters um, there that the one that's in the middle in between the rafters that you can see going across all the way there it's called an under purling all right all the way along that's usually about halfway let's say in between the rafter and that provides support um, to the span and then you can see um, right there that's a strutting beams 
So the strutting beam always goes, not always, but um, needs to go to a support underneath, which is either a wall or if there's a beam up here, a load bearing, um, we call it a strutting beam. But these ones are going to a wall underneath, a top plate. So they'll be, um, the walls underneath will be load bearing walls. So they're the struts right there, okay? Um, so if you have a look at this one over there, so it's, it's, it hasn't got a strut, um, that's called a scissor beam. So if, there was obviously no wall underneath it to support the under purling. Um, so they put a beam that goes across and then the strut is over here, which goes to a, um, a wall underneath to the top plate. Okay, so that's just a bit of a basic understanding of what each members do. Um, and yeah, you need to check, make sure that everything's sturdy, solid, nothing's being cut. Uh, a lot of times, um, if someone's had an air conditioning installed, a system installed, or um, a skylight, unfortunately, some of the installers, they cut things that they shouldn't be cutting. Um, so that's what you want to check. Um, everything looks solid, sturdy, good fixings, um, and tied down properly. Um, the other thing that sometimes you can do in your building inspections, um, obviously, this property has a sarking underneath it so you can't see the tiles which is good that it's got sarking but sometimes um, when there's no sarking you can definitely pick up a cracked tile you'll see straight away um, and obviously you'll probably see moisture marks on the ceilings um, but if it's a minor leak most of, sometimes the insulation can can take up some of those minor leaks and won't come through until it gets quite bad um, so you want to double check that now what I like to do um, for the uh, Termite inspection, um, the timber pest, is you, you, you basically you've got to check all the timbers. You've got to start from one corner of the roof, work your way all the way around, and you want to check every rafter, every ridge board, everything. And you basically, all on the corners here, if there's ever had termite damage or workings from previous termite, you'll, you'll see frass. So it's very important that you check every single timber. Um, and that's, a, that's something that really takes up a lot of time. Um, but it must be done because what you're trying to find if, on a pre-purchase is if the property number one has active termites or if it's had previous termites. So you want to know um, if something's been repaired or it's been changed um, or there's previous damage. Um, because if something's had previous termites um, and it hasn't been treated right or there has no, no physical barrier being installed or something to prevent future attack. Um, nine out of 10 times, um, termites will come back. Um, it's just basically termites um, are subterranean. They come from the soil up. Um, and just like we have roads, they have little roads in the soil and the tunnels underneath. Um, and those tunnels are always gonna lead back to your house where they came in from. So even if you got rid of, uh, even if you got rid of that colony, there's a good chance um, that a different colony will use the same roads to get back into your house. So um, it's really important if a house has had termites, that the, it's got a physical barrier or a termite barrier installed um, to prevent future attack. So basically um, you do need to crawl all the way in um, during your inspections and get right, right in to the corners. So most of the time it means army crawling down um, and it's something that it's not nice to do, but we do do it, unfortunately, it's gotta be done. Um, there's no point on shining a torch and going, yep, it looks good from here, um, cause I just won't cut it. Um, so a bit of a trick um, uh, that um, pest controllers and um, the termite experts um, will do. Um, so I, what I'll say is try and understand where you are in your roof. So try and get an idea of where the, the bathroom is, where the kitchen is and where the laundry is. Um, the reason for that is uh, termites are drawn to moisture. So if your house has a water leak, um, you can bet, bet you nine out of 10 times that the termites will get in. It's just, uh, they need moisture to survive. Otherwise they will die out, um, they will dry and die out. So moisture and food is their number one source. So a water leak to anyone's house uh, is, especially from a bathroom, uh, waterproofing failure um, is a major issue um, and that's where they'll come in from. So bathrooms, 
kitchens, laundries are the key spots. Now, part of your inspections, um, inspectors will not move insulation. Um, it's just doesn't happen it's not supposed to happen it's not part of the Australian standards um, but what we do um, we do move um, some insulation around the bathrooms the laundries and the kitchen area so what I want to expose I want to expose and I'll show you now once I get in here I want to expose the top plate of the bathroom so I'm in the bathroom area now so here we go you can see me moving insulation so that this is a top plate right um, and that top plate will run all the way along you can see you moving it there and we want to follow the whole wall um, in that bathroom area and there it is yeah um, there we go and the reason we got our sorry guys it's very hard to do a few things at once but let me move this out of the way um, this is the reason we got our screwdriver um, you really want to tap have a look for any workings um, and you can use that with your torch as well but if anything looks a bit funny um, you get your screwdriver you tap it and you see how it goes that way um, but that's what we want to do and you want to do that too as much as you can all the way around because like I said if termites are going to come in um, nine out of ten times um, this is where they're going to come in from so um, it's important that we check those areas so you want to do that to your um, kitchen um, kitchen areas bathrooms and laundries um, you won't be able to do that everywhere otherwise you'll be here all day and um, it's probably not 100% necessary anyway okay so the other thing um, that we want to check when we're up here um, if you haven't heard of it's called uh, delignification of timber so that is when basically I mean visually the timber starts to deteriorate and it goes all fluffy um, and hairy and it starts to break down um, and the reason it's called delignification is because the natural glue uh, which is called lignin in the timber um, starts to break down um, and the timber starts to weaken um, so depending how bad it is um, you may have to uh, replace timber or timbers um, so that's something you've got to look for as well. So um, we find there's many reasons why these things can happen. Um, uh, a lot of people say uh, if you live in a busy road, the, 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 the pollution and whatnot um, can cause that. Um, or if you live near the beach, the salts. Um, but we find um, and we notice it the most is really in the most older properties. So um, properties that are 50 years plus, um, which have terracotta roof tiles. Um, we find once the terracotta roof tiles have reached their lifespan, um, which can be, um, you know, 40, 50 years plus, um, they basically start to release like an efflorescence, um, like a salt. Um, I'm assuming that's because it starts to soak in more water, the tiles, and it releases the salt through the tile. Um, and the salt gets into the, the rafters or the, the timber battens, which support the tiles. Um, and that breaks down the lignin in the timber. Um, and that's when we've noticed it, um, the, the delignification. So, um, don't really notice it in um, the newer properties or even 20 30 year old properties but we definitely have noticed it in the much older ones and with the terracotta tiles so um, that's what I put it down to um, and that's from my experience but that's something you can uh, keep an eye on if you do have an older property um, and go from there okay um, thank you um, so they're the main things basically top plates on the bathrooms laundries kitchens uh, check the structure of the of the of the roof um, start on one corner check for any termite workings termite leads uh, things like that one thing I will say if you do find anything that looks like termites or termite leads please don't open up the lead don't break it open um, that's the worst thing you could do um, unless you're an expert of course the expert will open it up um, they want to see what you know slightly see what kind of termites it is because um, um, obviously different termites will affect different treatments. Um, so you've got the Coptotermus, Asinaciformis, uh, the Coptotermus franchi, you've got Nasut, Nasutotermus, you've got Shedderidotermus, um, and they all 
have different processes to treat them so um that's a quick sort of uh rundown on how we would do our um timber pest and building inspection um and doing it properly does take uh, a lot of time so as you can see this is not a big roof but um we'll definitely be spending a bit of time in this roof um and then vice versa in the subfloor so um it's something that you sort of just can't go up here stick your head around and go yep it's good um to do a proper inspection you really got to spend the time and and have a good look um so there there are a couple of things a um, bit of advice uh, for the diys um, or other inspectors on how we do it um again if you have any questions or or um you need some advice we're happy to help um but uh yeah if not contact us and uh, we can help you with your inspections um thank you for listening and uh yeah i'll uh see you on the next video Ta.